Hey guys, Mashy here, and welcome to the final installment of the Rocket Robot on Wheels Any Percent tutorial. Today we are tackling JoJo's World. We finally got the 65 tickets necessary to enter, and it's time to finish the game. So as soon as you come in, you're going to go forward, and JoJo's going to talk to you. You're going to get some text. There's a couple different ways you can tackle this. One, you can go forward and you can just spam start and hope that you skip the text. <laughs> There's no real visual cue for this. Um, and you'll, you'll notice once, once it's skipped, the camera kind of zooms in a little bit. So that's your cue to, to stop mashing start there. The other option requires taking one health of damage. And it's the more consistent option, so what you do is, as soon as you exit this entry, you're going to head off to the right, and you're going to fall in the pit. And that's going to put you right here. This is the normal strat for this. Um, the main thing to be worried about in JoJo's world is your health, though. So, if you die, you get sent back to the very beginning of JoJo's world. So, if uh, you aren't comfortable with completing JoJo's World as I'm going to do so, I suggest getting an extra health health power up somewhere in the run. Uh, there, are, there are a few extra ones that, some of them I pointed out, some of them aren't too far off the route. There's the one in Cloudy Island under the dock right before you do the first uh, save and quit. Uh, there's also the one above the in, in Whoopi's world, the overworld, there's the one above the, the 40 ticket switch that opens the second floor. Um, those are the two that I would recommend grabbing if you're having trouble. But for the most part you shouldn't have an issue outside of one or two spots. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. Uh, we'll make our way through JoJo's World. I'll do a bunch of the normal strats and then I'll show you some alternate strats as well. So you're just going to... It's, it's a big platforming section. Uh, you're just going to make your way around. You can skip the top uh, flower just like that. It's really, really easy. And a lot of this is just, you know, knowing how to platform and how to move rocket around. The, the, the spiral, you just kind of like hold forward and you'll make your way across. Just make sure to jump at the end. And then these, this part right here, these things can be really, really trolly sometimes. You just want to like... Space your jumps so that you you're gonna get close to them first before you try and grab on. Sometimes, like uh, you might just miss by a little bit. And now you're coming into the paint misbehaving section. Like in paint misbehaving itself, there is the uh, green and orange guard. You can see it at the top of the screen there. Um, he wants you to paint yourself the same color as him like before, but this time we have other plans. So this is actually probably the hardest part of of JoJo's world because you're going to be taking a lot of damage. So I'm going to try and show it off and then I'll explain exactly what happens. Okay, so I made it up. What happens here is you're taking damage off of that ball. And every time that you touch it, you can, like, as you touch it, you can uh, jump. and try, You can try and jump. And it'll, it could give you a, a higher jump. A little bit of a boost. 
So what you do is you, you jump off of that crystal and then you make your way up here. And you just try and time it so that as you're hitting the ball, you press your jump button. And it'll boost you up. It takes a little bit of practice, of course. Um, but once you get it, it's not it's not horrible. You can usually get it within like one to three tries. And as long as you have some extra health coming out of this, you're gonna be fine for for the most part. So I'll I'll, I'll show it off again. You, hit, you jump off of the crystal to get a little bit extra height, and you just try and try and time your jumps so you get up there. And what's great is that if you fall from here, uh, you respawn at this point. You don't you don't go back. Now. This spiral here, there's two different strats you can do. One is you're gonna go and jump down into the middle of the spiral. And then as it comes here, you're gonna jump out and to the right. And then you're gonna use oops. Um you're gonna you're gonna try and land on the platforms down there. It can be a little tricky depending depending on uh, your camera angle and whatnot. So I usually use the your second jump to get to get there. If you're not comfortable with that, you can just ride this all the way. Just, you know, use use momentum, use the angles to, to get across. Make your way up here. And there's actually two different ways you can do this. You can jump you can take the elevator down, which is the normal way, and it'll it'll take you right to those platforms that we jumped to before. Or you can jump off this side, and you'll just hold forward, and you can land right on here. So a couple different things you can do, depending on how comfortable you are with the different strats. And then you come up to this section here. Um, what you do here is you come up to the end, you take a bomb, throw it at the wall. That'll reveal the fan, and then you throw a bomb at the fan there, and jump through it. Usually it works like that pretty, pretty, pretty much every time. There's another strat you can do, um, not 100% like sure how to set it up perfectly but what you do is you use yourself into the into the um to the wall and you can get get around like that i don't know how to do it every time but you know i kind of like jump at it and just make your way around like that of course that's that's like the super advanced strat where you gotta you gotta make sure you know what you're doing. As you can see there, like I don't know if you saw it, but I landed on the fan blade and used it to to boost me over. So it that that strat's probably the, the harder strat, but the best way to do it, just throw a bomb at the wall, wait for the debris to fall, and then you're gonna throw a bomb at one of the blades and then just jump across. You're always going to throw the bomb at the, the blade on the left because that's that's the best place to, to do it. Because as you throw it there, it's going to rotate so that you can land on it. Pretty easy. Except for this. This is a dump strap, but, you know, it works. It works sometimes. And you're gonna just make your way to the end here, and jump down the hole. That'll take you to Area 2. Once you're in Area 2, you're probably not going to take too much damage. Uh, there's not really a lot that can hurt you here, except falling. So, you're pretty much going to be safe uh, 
I still recommend having some extra health just in case you do mess up something. But it's the second the second half of JoJo's is pretty easy. First thing you're gonna do is just grapple up here. And you're gonna do a, a freeze freeze jump into a grapple. Um, if you you need to you need to do this one like close enough so like right where that line is is where you want to kind of have the ice platform so you, that way you can, you're close enough to the grapple point there and then this part you just make your way to the end and just jump up <laughs> it's it's pretty simple it skips the entire puzzle there like <laughs> You're supposed to like make your way around and like I don't even know how to do this. But you can just ice platform at the end and you've done it. These platforms really don't make sense. Uh, just ride them around and make your way through. Like they're they're kind of based on magnets, but they they feel really really weird. Now it's time for the magnet section. Magnets uh, are not my best friend, uh, so I like to skip using magnets whenever possible. Uh, hello? Okay. So the way you can skip this is by jumping on top of that, jumping on top of this little button here. You, you want to get on like the corner of this little overhang and it'll push you up so with momentum you jump up there if you have trouble doing it there's no shame in actually using the magnets use the magnet grab up there and whatever no shame, but it, it's a—it's not a terribly difficult jump. You just gotta like position yourself right for it. You just make your way around, and magnets part two. So magnets part two can be tricky if you. There's two ways to do this. Um, number one, you just take this box into a corner. And now we're gonna hover. We're gonna hover our way up. So, like that. If you, if you don't know what hovering is, it's basically, you take, you take a box, you grab onto it while on top of it, and then you jump and release. Like, you jump, release, and grab, and alternate, and you just gain height. You kind of want to, you kind of want to do it fast, so what I usually do is I just kind of like, mash A, B, and R. And, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, also, depending on your setup, like, I usually put it right in the corner. You, you might not even need to hold forward at all, but sometimes, like, I find holding forward keeps it in the corner a little bit better. Like, just kind of, like, holding to the corner. But depending on, like, how how consistent you are with the, the grabbing and releasing, it may not rotate the box that much. This is just something you need to like get a feel for. If you don't have that feel, um, you can also try it in this corner. It, it doesn't make a, a big difference. I think for the longest time I, I used that corner and then this corner worked a little bit better for some times and then you just try what works for you. But if you don't feel comfortable with that, what you can do is you can actually move this box like eh, somewhere around here and then you're gonna 
set up, set this up. So do that. Grab up there. Boom, boom. And then you can grab a box like that. Throw it up there. And swing up to the top. It's up to you if you want to do it normally like that, or if you want to learn how to hover. Hovering is obviously like a little bit, a little bit better, but there's the potential of being stuck there for a little bit. So after after magnets, you're just gonna keep moving on. You're gonna head over to the Lethal Lake of Lava. Lethal Lake of Lava is um, yeah, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, these platforms sometimes because they tilt, um, sometimes it'll just kind of eat your your jump input. You just gotta be careful. So take you want to take your time there a little bit. And then at the lethal lake of lava, you have to wait for this rock to to get in position because otherwise you're not gonna make your way down. Um, it's not you don't have to wait too long. You just you know wait a little bit and. The rock will eventually get into position for you. And you're just gonna make your way up here. Make sure to grab onto the points and not just mess it up. You can, you can skip the top one there um, by doing a little thing like that. And then now we get to freeze the freeze platforms um, or the boost platforms. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. So you just boost your way around. I I hold on to my double jump after I boost to just make sure I land on the platform. And the way the way I get onto these is I do a, a little short hop and then just roll off. That 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 makes it the most consistent way to to get across that I found. And also, if you're feeling risky, um, you can skip this first uh, section here by using uh, the freeze ray. Of course, that, that has more risk to it because you're, if you fall, you actually start back before those, uh, those tilted platforms there. So, you have to you have to consider the risk or reward there. You skip one platform and risk it all, pretty much. But yeah, you can boost up there and then just make your way over here. At this top platform, I usually just do a quick jump before I go off. For whatever reason, like it can eat your jumps pretty easily. Just grab on there and head over to the spinny platform. So I'm going to explain exactly how this works. Uh, you, you're going to stand in here and then you're going to hold forward and backward. And that, what that's going to do is it's going to rotate the gear that you're standing on. And then once it builds up enough momentum, the platform is actually going to come around to the other side for you to get across. Now I've come up with uh, a visual cue that will that works for this to let you know exactly how long to hold it. So if you look at the gear that's underneath, uh, I'm going to pause it once you get in position here. So somewhere around like right here. So if you're looking at the little, um, what are the, what's the word? The little the spikes or the spokes or the, the little cogs, I guess it's called. Um, once that first one comes around and the next one comes in line with the little thing you're standing on, that's when you can turn around. And then you're going to count four. So one, two, three, 
four. And as the fourth one comes close, that's when you can jump out and cross. So I'll do that again to show you. Uh, first one comes comes around, and then as the second one comes in line with the left hand side, that's when you turn around and count four. So one, two, three, and as four comes close, that's when you jump out, and here you go. Pretty, pretty easy. It's You can probably cut that a little bit closer too, so that, that way you're not spending as much time pressing the spin in the thing. But you know, that's, that's a pretty safe way to do it there. And you're going to come across the Sinister Spider next. Um, there's a couple strats for this. Number one... Huh, that's interesting. I've never actually fallen there. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even know that you could fall there. Uh, number one... You're just gonna take a bomb and throw it at the, like, shoulder of the first leg. And just blow that leg up and jump on the back. Normally you're supposed to um, blow up all the legs, but... You can just blow up the one and get up here. The other strat, which is pretty tricky, is you go around the first leg, not even blowing it up. So, if you do it right, it, it's very tricky. Um, if you do it right and not get hit, that's the key. If you don't get hit, you can get up on the, t on the spider's back without without blowing it up. But generally what happens is you get hit and then it knocks you into the pit and you end up taking two points of damage. So you can actually get past it without getting hit at all. Um, I think I think this uh, save state is just uh, a bad save state for for this um, might, it might be like a timing thing, like you can time it, like something like that. There, you did it with did it without uh, blowing up the leg and taking any damage. See, so once you're done there, you're gonna head head over here, and this is what I call the climb. This is probably like the true final boss of the game. You're gonna stand like right about here, pull out your grapple aim, and grab onto this first one here. I usually zoom out, and then what you can do is you can actually skip skip part of uh, the cycle. So, you grab on, zoom out, and then just release, grab on, release, grab on, release, and do that a couple times. And that's, that, that actually pulls the, the thing up a little bit, and you'll skip uh, part of the first cycle there. When you come over here, I usually wait this out. You just wait for wait for them to line up, and just go, jump to the third one. Here you can do, you can do more of those things to, to get higher, and you're just gonna come up here and land. See, like if you do it, if you do it well enough, you can skip pretty much the entire first uh, first cycle, and then you can grab the third one pretty quickly from there. Just make your way up. If you don't feel comfortable like releasing and re-grabbing, you can just ride them um, until they line up and then jump to the next one. And then from here, you come up to the true final, the final boss of the game. The Flaming Sphere of Doom. It's probably the hardest final boss in all of video game history. You're just gonna come up here, and 
you're going to jump on the ball. And then you're just going to ride the ball. There's a strip of safe spot, like, right down the middle. So, all you have to do is just stand there and jump a couple times. You're just gonna, you're just gonna make sure to pay attention and don't fall off. Um, and you're just gonna ride the ball here. The key thing to note about this is that, uh, Aside from the strip down the middle, there's the triangles safe spots on each side, and it goes left, left, right, right, like in terms of safe spots. So like there's two left, two right, so that's a right, right, left, left. So what you can do is you can even like move left and right a little bit just so you stay further away from the, the parts that you can get damaged by. And it speeds up towards the end, but it's still not, like, threatening at all. And then, as soon as it hits the rock, that's when you want to get ready. As soon as, uh, because time is as soon as it fades to black there. So, you want to get ready to, for time once you hit the rock, but don't, don't for, uh, don't give up. Um, don't give up playing as soon as you hit the rock there, because I want to show you something that can happen. Of course, we're gonna have to play through the, the entire um, sphere of doom section again. Which is about a minute long. It's a, basically a minute long auto scroller. So, pretty much what you're gonna do is, as soon as you touch the touch the sphere of doom and it starts rolling, you you kind of know you have about a minute more before the game is over. So you have a general idea of your pace at this point. So you can kind of gauge what your, your uh, final time is going to be. So I'm at 1 HP right now, and we're going to hit the rock, and I'm going to take damage and die. Now, look where I am. I'm all the way back at the beginning. So, if you die, even after hitting the rock there, you still have to redo all of JoJo's World. It's the biggest time loss you can possibly have in one sec, in like one go. So, always make sure to play through the rock until it fades out, especially if you're at 1 HP. And another like weird thing you can do is you can you can jump on the rock and then you can like jump back off. <laughs> like I think I think I think the game like despawns the platform or something. I don't I don't remember exactly what happens. Or like it just doesn't end or something. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> We can we can just watch watch the rock, um, just watch the uh, sphere of doom just roll over there. I'm actually slightly intrigued and wondering if the the game will actually finish like this. Up the it blew up the uh, the boulder, but look, we're still playing. Oh, 
Yeah, so the trigger for... Seems like the trigger for the end cutscene is actually at the wall there. So... You can't, you can't cheese it like that. But you really don't need to cheese it anyway. So like I said, time ends once the it fades to black after the rock is broken. And it goes into the cutscene there. And that's Rocket Robot on Wheels. Any percent. Um, there are no credits for any percent. Uh, because of the way the game's credits work. You... you co once you have all 100%, then the, it unlocks the credits room. It's, it's a room, it's not like a, a credits roll. And it's just a room with a bunch of screws that if you grab them, it, it says like developer names and stuff. It's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, you don't get a credits roll for, for beating the game. So th this, this category is kind of arbitrary because you're not actually getting credits. But it still it still beats the game in the sense that we we stopped JoJo and we did all the plot related stuff. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial, and I hope to see your times on the leaderboard pretty soon. Uh, if you have any questions uh, or concerns, you can shoot them at me. Or you can head to the Discord, and I'm sure someone there will be happy to help. And, of course, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys.